Good morning, Director Tom Hackman, Director of Investigations and Homeland Security. I want to talk this morning about uh, some uh, some vice activity that we actually have going on now as we speak. <clears throat> this is Operation Real Stop, R E E L Stop. Uh, it's a cooperative investigation that's between the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the State Attorney's Office, and the Office of Statewide Prosecutor here in Florida. It's really this our latest and current step into the investigations um, into really what the media and, and some of the public term as internet cafes, but is uh, really truly a gambling house by the statutorial definition. Uh, as we speak right now, we are at five different uh, gambling houses conducting search warrants, and uh, those are the Calypso Sun Sweepstakes, located at 6058 Merrill Road in Arlington, the Calypso Sun Sweepstakes, located at 7900 Block 103rd Street on the west side, Lucky Seven Cyber Cafe, 5100 Block of Timaquana, Lucky, uh, I'm sorry, that was Lucky Sevens. Lucky Strike Cyber Cafe is 10,150 Beach. And Spinner's Palace at 708 Edgewood. And I'll give that information out through the PIO so you'll actually have those addresses. Um, this highlights the work of our JSO Vice Unit. Uh, Vice Unit is responsible for investigation into some of the quality of life issues that, uh, that Jacksonville faces. Uh, one of which is investigation into gambling. And uh, that's what this is. You know, when you think about vice, you, you, you harken back to Crockett and Tubbs, Miami Vice. It's not always all Miami Vice and that sort of thing. Um, the men and women who really comprise our vice unit, they work tirelessly on issues that impact the, the city of Jacksonville and the good people who live here in Jacksonville. These are experienced detectives who work protracted investigations into some really complicated matters. And some of the matters are, are complicated with with the laws as it pertains to these uh, to the gambling houses. You know, they utilize their experience in making these cases, and in this and, and really all of the cases that, that they and all the detective work, you know, experience matters, and we utilize their experience where we can and how we can. Um, you know, we're working through the arrest right now as we speak, we're uh, serving these search warrants, um, and as the information comes through this, this afternoon, I'll get that information to you on the arrestees and, and who actually, uh, who was arrested. <clears throat> these businesses and the types of businesses that they do, they're illegal. Um, that's just plain and simple. Today it does not really conclude our investigation into these cyber cafes, internet cafes, and gambling houses. Um, when they close, you know, you, you see this happen. This is really the third uh, generation of this in, into these. And you see them close and, and another one pops up. And in order to try to combat that sort of whack-a-mole thing that happens with these, uh, we're beginning to look at and make efforts towards some legal action against the landlords who continually rent and lease to these types of businesses. Uh, you know, to, to make some legal inroads to make them stop renting and leasing to stop this illegal activity. Um, you know, this is not This is not an easy investigation to do, and it takes some time to go in to be able to make enough of an undercover case to ensure that gambling is really occurring, that you know, these are not games of chance, as the, the statute defines them, um, to, be, to, be, to be legal. And um, I really want to make sure that our message to the owners and operators of these types of businesses is that your business is illegal. Comply with the law or... Um, or you might be the next one featured here when we talk about it. We're going to shut you down. We're going to make the rest. We're going to continue to do it. Today is the tip of an iceberg. As you, as you drive through Jacksonville, uh, these businesses are scattered through all the city. And again, our, our efforts are based on the fact that these businesses that operate in this manner are illegal. Uh, we will seize their items that, that are in there, shut them down, and move on to the next group. I can answer any questions, Dan. Dan Scanlon, Times Union. How do they keep on finding loopholes in whatever ordinance to reopen and, and not be illegal the first day they unlock the door? It's a good question. They, they, they work through some of, the, uh, some of the software on the machines, some of the, the means by which they run these machines, and they believe that they're within, within the law. Our investigation, and again, it takes... It takes some time, it's protracted, to go in there and work through them to show that it is not a game of chance. This is gambling. You're, you are gambling your money, 
and um, I mean it, it's, it's lucrative for them. So whatever loophole they can climb through, they're taking their sacks of cash with them through that loophole. Um, it's illegal. And we're going to stop. Roger Reader, First Coast News. Will those uh, five establishments doors be locked today? We're, well, yeah, I would, I would assume so, based on the fact that we will not leave them with anything to run their business. More in the pipeline. Yes. And uh, I guess the message to other people in this type of business, uh, mind your P's and Q's. Uh, if you don't mind your P's and Q's, we'll come mind them for you. Is there anything, is there any way to do what they are doing legal? I mean, uh, like you mentioned, one closes, another one pops up somewhere else. And people wonder, uh, what's the law? Yeah, I believe there are things within the legislation that, that would allow them to be legal. But on the other side of that coin, that's not the, the lucrative portion of it, uh, and it costs money to, for, the, for these folks to run these businesses uh, if, if they're doing it within the legal realm. Have you found some that are doing it? Um, as we do these investigations, we are able to find some. It's, it's not these bigger cyber cafes, though. It's some of the, some of the smaller things that, that we'll go into that, that we can't exactly prove and can't, can't say for sure that, that I can make a case that it, you know, that it, it falls into, into gambling and, and legal activity, then we won't make that case on there. But but our detectives are, as, as part of the normal course of their, what the vice guys do, and, and they'll do the gambling and they'll do prostitution, uh, the, those sort of things, the, the quality of life issues like I talked about, uh, they'll make their way through that. So I, the best thing I can say is if, if these folks aren't making money with it, with the, the legal stuff, then this is why they do what they do. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Channel 4. Um, you said quality of life. Curious, how much money can someone actually make, or have you found that people have made from these operations? And two, we hear a lot from elderly people who say that this is their quality of life. They go there because they have their friends, they have served Doritos and chips, and it's like a, you know, they get upset when these places are shut down. I, I appreciate that. Um, thousand to answer the first part of your question, thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars of cash that we have we have seized during these operations. I can't tell you what, what's there today. Um, if it's proceeds from an illegal gambling house, we're going to seize it. Um, and we'll have some of that information for you later later today. Um, and I can kind of get I can kind of get what you're saying. Uh, if they're using it as entertainment, you know, um, it's unfortunate that they, they choose to find entertainment through means that we find to be illegal, I would have to say that perhaps a another hobby or another another area that wasn't illegal well, would be somewhere that they need to go. It, uh, you know, this isn't when some folks look at it as, as the crime of the century, but we see through, you know, the reveal the deal case that we worked with before, just the underlying effects that this type of operation has um, in, in the the breadth and depth that that particular case went. I'm not saying that this case is related to that one or, or unrelated to it, but the business model is very simple. Roger Reeder again. Uh, you mentioned that another potential recourse here is landlords' buildings. Tell me what options uh, law enforcement has there to, I guess, not offer those people a venue. Uh, we're working through getting uh, some RICO cases looked at for the people who continually lease and rent to what is proved to be illegal businesses. That could be worked into a RICO case. I would prefer to have them not rent back to them to comply with, uh, with what the law is so they wouldn't subject themselves to criminal prosecution, but that's not outside the realm or outside of what we would consider. Stephanie from WOKD. Those landlords, for example, like, are you noticing a common thread through the now three generations or so that we've? We are, and again, uh, tired of the whack-a-mole game. Decided a different way to uh, to look at this. That's another way we can look at it to try to avoid the cut one down, another one grows up. In the same, and it's they're growing up in the same business. Change the name on the front of the store, change the software, and we're back at it. Our goal is to stop it. So those people haven't necessarily been arrested or charged in any of these prior generations, but no, do have ties to them? No, they have not. There are some that, that have those continual ties and uh, we're after them. And can you say how many arrests we might be looking at today, Ballpark? I don't know. Again, they're, 
uh, I'll give you these addresses if anybody's interested. Obviously, you know, need some uh, footage of their the search warrants being conducted. You may be able to, to get some of that and get somebody out to those locations. Forty first coast news. Are these owned by one, two people? All these five you're busted, or they're all owned by five different people? They seem um, interconnected. Uh, families or, or similar last names, and I truly believe this is a this is a group of folks who are, are either related or, or work well together for some reason. Um, so yeah, not these. In the past, these types of investigations have involved similar busts in other counties. Is there any other activity going on around the state that you know of? No, just just as far as I know, just ours to me. Any questions? Thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you too. Happy Easter.